pass to Leitner. Puts it up. You're listening to the Culture State Podcast. Get ready. Hey, it's Coach Stay. It's Coach Stay. It's the Coach Stay podcast. podcast. It's the Coach Stay. It's the Coach Stay. It's the Coach Stay podcast. podcast. You got Dennis Cox and Chris Lee, and we are the pace to be. Hey, 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 hey. hey. I was gonna go somewhere, but I messed it up. So I'm gonna keep going. This Coach Stay podcast. <laughs> Chris Lee, Dennis Cox. <laughs> you know, that's I'm not a good freestyler, Dennis. No, no, no. Neither. I am have I. to sit down and I have to write it out. That's fine. And That's okay. But we have a guest. You've been, on you've been today. around teleprompters too long. It, it, that that's part of it, but also just I think my mind works faster than what my mouth does. Mm-hmm. And fine. even before the whole teleprompter thing was a part of my life, I just wasn't a good freestyler. So whenever whenever I wrote my bars, I literally had to like take time to write it out. So mm, that's fair. But we have somebody on today who is a good freestyler Mm -hmm. and maybe you've seen her on the court breaking ankles maybe you've seen her drop threes yeah on your head top you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying her name is michaela boykin former duke blue devil yeah you say the key word there being former duke blue devil she Mm -hmm. just transferred to unc charlotte after her time at duke she just graduated but she still has a couple years left of eligibility this is someone chris who i think is actually a the perfect picture of what a student athlete is today Mm -hmm. in regards to, Hey, you know what? They spent time at their school. They committed, they did their four years and may have dealt with some injuries, but now they got this, these years or year of extra ability, two years in her case, and she's needed a place to play. And she still got, you know, she's talented. She's, she's a great player. If you ever had a chance to see her play, but she just needed a home for lack of a better term. And it was, nice to see that she was able to land in a spot still in North Carolina with a place to go, but there are a lot of student athletes out there who are still looking for places to play. And these are some top level D one players. And she's not without adversity. I mean, she's torn mm-hmm. her ACL three times. Yeah. <laughs> she's had three yeah. ACL tears. Um, Can't imagine you know, that. happened in high school happened uh, twice at Duke. I believe if, if I'm, if I'm uh, don't have that, you know, wrong, and to have so much adversity and then to have the coach that you've been talking to uh, since you were like 11, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you know, before what you thought was going to be uh, your last year uh, at Duke or, or, you know, next to last year because she wanted to, you know, continue, um, you know, say that, hey, I, I have to I have to step aside. Yeah. And then Kara Lawson comes in, which is a great ad, a great hire. Um, but the person you've been talking to since you're 11 and you're like 22, 23 at this point, you know, they're, they're gone. That's, that's a, that's a huge change for anybody to go through. So her story is, um, amazing when you really like dig deep into it. And and I'm glad we get a chance on this show, not only to talk to people that we're, uh, very familiar with, but Mm -hmm. there are some people who may be introduced to Michaela Boykin for the first time, because maybe they don't pay attention to women's basketball as much. But she is an amazing player, but she also has an amazing story. And her story is something that you definitely want to hear. For sure. And I, one thing that I will say is being a former student athlete and now coaching is that I well, I'll always tell you high school kids this that are being recruited, no matter what level, D1, D3, Division two, doesn't matter. The coach that recruits you, the high likelihood that coach is not going to be there when you graduate mm. or the last coach that you play for isn't going to be the one that recruited you because you may transfer or that coach may leave. That coach may get fired. You don't know the likelihood of you playing for the same coach for all four years. And it's the same coach that recruited you rare ain't very high. It's a, uh, it's, it's a game of musical chairs for sure. Mm-hmm. In college sports right now, um, you know, you have, Coaches, uh, coaching staffs, always looking for um, bigger opportunities elsewhere, uh, or maybe they don't get a chance to, maybe they don't perform as well. I mean, you have somebody at uh, like Wes Miller at UNCG, probably was at UNCG two or three years longer than maybe what he should have been or could have been. You know, I, I know he had other opportunities at other places. And, um, you know, and and this was the year that he, he pulled the trigger and went elsewhere and, you know, as a UNCG alum, 
can't even be mad at that because it's like, you know, we're, we're just stealing time with this coach that supposed is supposed to be teaching or coaching um, a team that's in the top 25. And so um, Wes Miller moved on and then, you know, same thing happens with players, you know, with the transfer portal, not, and it's not always their decision to enter the transfer portal. Yeah. It's the coach's decision to enter the transfer portal. In this case with Michaela, it's exact same case. And so, um, you know, it's, it's always interesting to have that. And I think um, that bit of context that I think a lot of fans are missing, uh, she can give that and it makes you, I think, um, a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more um, empathetic towards mm-hmm. the, the story of the student athlete. You know, um, I think fans assume student athletes should be like they are giving their undying love to a university. Yeah. But if a coaching change comes in or if the coach that did, you know, recruit you, recruit you feels like they don't have a use for you after a year or two, what else can you do? Yeah. Or if you're not giving the, getting the playing opportunities that you were promised to, to go there, you don't want to waste your four years just Mm -hmm. sitting down. You want to actually play. Yeah. So you want to, you want to go somewhere where you're going to play, even if that means taking a step down or a step up. Yeah, go go whatever's best place for you. I, you know, Chris, when I coached full time, I probably lost recruits saying this, but I because I was always open and honest with them because I, I would often get asked, "Coach, are you going to be here all four years?" Again, for those who may not know, I used to coach women's lacrosse full time at the Division three level. Coach, are you going to be here all four years? I said I would, cannot guarantee that. I, I cannot because I don't know if I'm going to be coaching that long. I don't know what's going to happen in my personal life in terms of I may have to get out of coaching. I may have to go home because you know there might be a family thing. I don't know. They can walk in the door and say, thanks for your time. Best of luck in your future endeavors. They may have walked in the door the moment you walk out. The, any of these things can happen. You just don't know. I, I may have lo- lost recruits because of that reason, but I didn't want to lie to them. You know, yeah. I, I always wanted to be open and honest with recruits. So, um, yeah, there's there's always certain situations where student athlete says, you know what, this is not the right situation for me, but that's OK. You know what? And, and another thing that's happening, too, um, if you look at um, NC Central, this happened uh, two years ago at Winston-Salem State. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you want to be there. You want to build as a coach, but then the school says, well, for us to make ends meet, we've got to get rid of the sport. Yep. And that's something, um, that is, is being dealt with. I mean, NC central losing their baseball program, uh, after this year, Winston Salem state won two, uh, independent division two national titles still lost their baseball program. Yeah. So my, uh, one of my, one of my buddies played lacrosse at Butler, but during the sophomore year, just before the start of the season, cut the program right there. Swimming at uh, East Carolina. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think they they reinstated women's swimming, but men's swimming, I think, still yeah. isn't there. Th- these are the harsh realities of uh, of college sports. And um, you have somebody who can who can speak to that, who can speak to you know what it's like being a student athlete and going through the different things. Uh, in Michaela Boykin, and not only just that though, like you might be you know, riding down the highway, you know, riding down I-40, you mm-hmm. know, going, you know, to Greensboro, you know, just to go to, you know, Greensboro Coliseum to watch a and place, yeah. play UNCG, you know what I'm saying? Something cool like that. Yeah. And get off on a, on the exit and then you're listening to 102 Jams and then you hear, yo, next up, MK from Clinton, MK. North Carolina, featuring Ninth Wonder. Ooh. And that's Michaela Boykin right there. That's right. So... You could be hearing her in your in your in your headphones in your speakers very 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 soon with some hot hits, and she'll be talking about that as well. All right, let's what let's not wait any further, Chris. MK Michaela Boykin, right after this. You see it. You see it. All right, welcome back to the Culture State podcast. We have somebody that I think embodies what Culture State is all about, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like is a super a future superstar in Michaela Boykin, uh, former basketball player at Duke, will now be playing at UNC Charlotte. Also, she's a rhyme specialist and just all this other type of stuff. So at some point, 
uh, you're either going to be paying tickets, paying for tickets to watch her plays in some professional arena, or you're going to be streaming her album, or maybe both at the same time. So, I say both. Why not both? Yeah, you listen to her album while you're heading to the the arena. Michaela, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Um, <laughs> thanks for boosting me up like that, but um, <laughs> um, y'all having me today? Yeah, no problem. Uh, so you're you're from Clinton, North Carolina, um, and I, I remember when we had a chance to speak for the first time last summer. Um, you had released uh, a nice little rhyme with everything that was kind of happening uh, last summer and everything was kind of getting hot with the different shootings and everything. And yep. um, and getting a chance to know you a little bit more uh, through all of that, I started to see that that's one of the ways that you love to express yourself. And you've been doing that a, a lot more uh, lately, it seems, on your on your Instagram uh, where's that, where's that going? Is there an album coming at any point soon or what's, what's happening with the music? Yeah. Um, I'm actually working on a, a lot of music right now. Um, been, been locked in on doing music over this since what January. Um, yeah. Um, as a lot of people know, ninth wonder is my mentor. So ninth has been helping me with a lot of my music as well. Helping me with, you know, my craft, um, just different mechanics with, you know, how I, you know, sing or, or rap my, my songs and stuff like that. But, uh, definitely something is coming. Um, I can't tell you exactly when, but something is definitely in the works right now. That's a great mentor to have right there. Yeah, knife. <laughs> yes, a fantastic mentor yeah. to have. And Michaela, at what point did you realize that you you had this talent? There's, there's certainly the passions there, but when did you realize, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this? Yeah, it was actually about a year ago. Um, it was around this time, May last year, um, when I put on my first freestyle and everybody liked it. And I was just like, well, this is, this, I didn't even think it was that good, but a lot of people were just like, you know, giving me a lot of good feedback about it. And that's when I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I think I think, you know, rapping might be something that, you know, I need to continue doing. So, yeah. We'll we'll try to get we'll get it before we end this off. We'll uh, see if we can get a freestyle from you. You don't have to do it right now, but we can All right. <laughs> we'll try to get something from you. But um, for sure. But it's been uh, I think it's really impressive. And you could really tell how good of a freestyler somebody is when you've done like the three word challenge and you, somebody puts out just words and you just kind of figure out a way to kind of weave them in there. Um, has that become is what's the parallels of learning how to be a great freestyler along with how to become a, a great basketball player? Um, you know, what are, what are similarities in that when it comes to practicing and getting better for both? Yeah, um, definitely. I feel like, um, you know, we're doing freestyles and stuff like that. It's definitely something to get your mind flowing. Um, I do the freestyles personally just so I can do a lot. Of, like I can get a lot of creative juice flowing. Um, it's good to just have like different words. You can just kind of piece words together with like rhyming words, words that are like near rhymes and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of feel like that correlates with basketball because you're kind of thinking on the spot for one. Two, you don't know what's going to be thrown at you in games and stuff like that. So it's just kind of thinking on the spot. Um, and I don't know, it's just having fun with it, just just having fun and, and getting it done. Um, sometimes the freestyles are actually hard to do uh, with depending on the words that I'm, I'm giving. But um, it's definitely a joy to do. I, I, I really enjoy doing the freestyles. And like I said, it's definitely something that's helped me as far as basketball, too, with thinking and um, stuff like that. Now, outside of Ninth Wonder being your mentor, any other artists out there who may influence what you do or that you look up to? Yeah, definitely. Um, Rhapsody, she's one of my favorite artists out there. Um, she is, to me, one of the best artists out there. Um, mm, my two absolutely. favorite are J. Cole and Rhapsody, uh, both North Carolina legends in my eyes. Um, it's crazy because through Ninth Wonder and like the mentorship program that I'm in, Ninth allowed me to uh, meet Rhapsody and I got to talk it, chop it up with rap for uh, a long time um she was helping me with my music uh i spit for just stuff like that like she's she's really been you know somebody that i really look up to throughout this entire you know process of me getting into the the, the music industry and um just rapping and stuff like that and i, I think rapsy is a duke fan am i am i correct I, honestly i don't even i don't even know if she's a duke fan i, I okay. hope she is. i mean that's, <laughs> that's who I went, so i don't know i i hope she is <laughs> It's uh, you know, it's funny that you brought her up because uh, when you said that Ninth was your mentor, that I, I want that Im immediately made me think about Rhapsody, and you know, if uh, you know, that's the person that he put a stamp on, and she absolutely, you know, went out there, and she's she's already a legend in my eyes in, in North Carolina. 
Um, you know, does it do you feel like this pressure, like knowing the type of people that Ninth has worked with and now you get a chance to work with them? Do you have feel like you, there's pressure for you to kind of live up to those expectations as, as a rhymer? Nah, I don't, I don't feel no type of pressure at all. Um, I still I see everything as a learning, um, learning, learning tools. And, you know, after just having conversations with Ninth, having conversations with rap, like it really meant a lot to me. Um, and it's going to always stick with me to the day I die is that when rap was talking to me, she was saying how she see a lot of herself in me. And mm. coming from rap, that's like something big right there. Like yeah. that's big to me. Like that's something that really like fueled my fire. Um, and I feel like, you know, honestly, just being surrounded by a lot of people in the industry that let like, ninth knows and, you know, I feel like that's just honestly going to help me out in my future, um, help me out as I continue to, you know, grow and learn as a, as a, as an artist. So. Let's uh, let's switch to, to basketball. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, the main reason uh, why we're here because your, your journey has been really amazing. Uh, we talked about your um, relationship with Joan P. McCauley and how you know she uh was on you very early uh in your in your career and then you had an early acl tear and she was still you know stuck by your side in in high school then you get to college and you know you just you keep fighting through these injuries and you spend a, a good time you know just uh dealing with uh you know your your different injuries that you've had at duke and then she leaves and you have a new coach that comes in and everything looks good you guys have a three and one start and then it's all over, you know, yeah, no done. season to, to play. And then, you know, you still, you're able to graduate from Duke, which is a huge accomplishment. Congratulations on that. Thank you. With still two years to the left of eligibility. Um, to me, it feels like you are the definition of, of learning how to, you know, uh, get through the hard times and navigate through uh, when things don't go your way. What's it been like with all the rapid change for you personally um, with the injuries, the coaching change, and how COVID-19 impacted this past season, you know, what do you do to remain positive? What is it about you and your mindset and how you approach everything that's allowed you to kind of stay above water? Yeah, um, definitely this starting with uh, coach P uh, definitely love coach P coach P is still to this day in my life, um, making an impact. She's actually doing some great things right now with her book that she just released. Um, Secret Warrior. Um, she's doing some good things with that and, and she's steady making an impact on everybody's lives, just you know, with mental health and stuff like that. So big props to her. Um, Coach P definitely picked up on me at a at a young age. Like I remember sitting in sixth grade back in back in my day whenever I played middle school ball and the first two colleges that came out was UNC and Duke and sat right beside each other. Um, not too long after that, ended up getting my first offer from Duke and Carolina as well. Um, and Coach P being, you know, the one offering me, um, that was definitely a journey, especially coming from where I come from. Um, not many people make it make it out. Um, so to be able to say that I committed to Duke in eighth grade and continue my journey up until my senior year of high school or college, um, it really tells a lot about my determination and drive to be able to be one of the ones from my city that, you know, graduated from of the prestigious University of Duke. Um, it really tells a lot about just, you know, me being determined to, you know, show kids where I'm from that you can always do something if you keep your mind focused on it, um, focus on education, things like that. And that was for me. I wanted to make my family proud, uh, my parents proud. I know once they saw me walking, well, not walking across the stage because it was a weird graduation. But <laughs> once they saw me, you know, in my graduation stuff, they were like, listen, like you already fulfilled your duties now. Just go live life. We support you in any way possible. Like you already got your degree. Like I'm happy with whatever you do after in life now. Like you already made us proud. Um, then you know, going speaking on COVID, it was definitely one of the hardest years for me um, as far as dealing with COVID and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people don't know, but in it was February, my entire family got COVID except me and my little brother, and my family was struggling really bad with it. Um, you know, going in and out of the hospital, and I ended up losing my grandfather um, wow. to COVID. Wow. So that was one of like the biggest losses that I still battle with to this day um, is dealing with his loss of, of COVID because it was just kind of like, you know, somebody that's there with you all your life. My grandfather is blind, um, well, was blind, and he was there my entire life. Like, all we know is my grandpa. He lived with us our entire life. And it was just kind of like, you know, I wasn't able to see him. I wasn't able to, like, you know, 
talk to him that much. Whenever he was in ICU, it was hard to hear him because he was like on all these breathing machines. Um, it was just a lot that I had to deal with. And I was still up here at Duke. Um, and it was just it was just really, really tough to to deal with that as far as um, COVID went. Um, and just seeing my family battle with COVID and stuff like that, it was just it was really tough. But it was definitely um, I feel like God really was on my side the entire time because he kept me busy doing stuff. He kept me busy with music, kept me busy, busy with friends. Um, he just really kept me busy and and helped me keep my mind off of like all the negative things. Um, speaking on Duke, um, yeah, when our season ended, we ended up um, coming back to coming back to Duke, and it's it's crazy um, <laughs> because I actually, you know, the plan was to actually stay at Duke for to get my uh, master's um, at Fuku School of Business. But that ended up not being the case. Obviously, God had different plans for me. Um, yes, we had, we had a coaching change. Uh, Kara, she's amazing, amazing person. Coaching staff, amazing. Um, but they did like end up releasing me from the team in like January type whatever. Um, so I ended up looking to explore other options and stuff like that. And that's when I knew Charlotte was, you know, definitely the the next move for me. Um, just so I can focus on a lot of things. It was it wasn't just basketball. The reason why I picked Charlotte. Had a lot of schools, you know, looking into me, but Charlotte really stuck out. I really love the coaching staff, Coach Care, uh, Coach Woods. You know, everybody is is literally elite in Charlotte, and you know they really brought that that family, you know, aspect to what I wanted, especially during the time with you know my grandfather passing and stuff like that. Like I can't recall a day where they didn't hit me up, you know, calling, checking on me about my grandfather. Like they were really, really there for me. Um, and really, you know, show that, you know, they weren't just there for my basketball skills. They wanted me beyond basketball. Um, they really, you know, are passionate about me and my music, passionate about me, social justice, everything that I do that's not involved in basketball, they're really passionate about. And they really support me and support my driving, you know, everything that I'm, you know, looking to do in life. Um, so that's beyond basketball. But um, Charlotte definitely, you know, I feel like I got a, a good one going making the decision to go to Charlotte. And I feel like Charlotte got a good one out of me because I'm ready to give it, give them my all, give them, you know, everything that I worked for my entire life. Absolutely. I, I got a question about the transfer portal because we, us in sports media, like to talk about it. Mm -hmm. What does it actually look like? Okay. Cause a lot of the jokes flying around is like, is like a LinkedIn profile you put out there. I mean, are you swiping right on schools until you get a match? Like what's the, what's the transfer portal actually <laughs> like? <laughs> Not nah, the transfer portal is actually um honestly it's one of the easiest things ever. I thought it was gonna be like a, a big long process, but it was literally like you go in there, go into like a document, sign your name, um, and then after that, you're basically released. Like you're you're done. You sign it's cool you to sign talk with anybody. <laughs> yeah, and like you just put your email, your phone number, and they just start contacting. Like they just start contacting you, coaches start contacting you. It's like a All website right. or a Google Doc. Yeah. Well, we do it through like our we have a little program called Arms that was at Duke where we it's like with all of our like um compliance rules and stuff like that. And you just mm -hmm. go into like the compliance thing and just fill it out. It's not, you know, anything too, you know, too long. Well, speaking on on that part, and you brought something up that um a lot of fans of college basketball, they uh look at it almost as one sided when it comes down to the the transfer portal. But you said it yourself, you were released. Your your plans were to stay at Duke and to get your master's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's it, the, the you didn't make the decision. Um, and that's the that's the reality for a lot of players. And and that's the thing when you sign on that con uh, I wouldn't say contract, I guess it is a contract, but when you have that scholarship, um, that scholarship isn't for four years, it's for a year. And you know, if the if the teacher uh, was teacher, if the coach wants to have you back. Uh, they can have you back. If they don't want to have you back. They won't have you back. Um, speak on that and and just what it's actually like being a student athlete. And, and in some ways, it's kind of you know teams are kind of being handled, especially at the Division One level, um, like it is a professional team. You know because you there could be free agency decisions made uh, by coaches depending on who they want to have back. Yeah, most definitely. Um... I feel like with, you know, the coaching change, yeah, um, it was definitely something that I didn't really expect to happen. But, you know, like I said earlier, um, God had his, his way of, you know, his plan for me and my future and stuff like that. And with, uh, you know, Kara, she 
she's she's a new coach and she's she's building her like her own program, her own, you know, legacy and stuff like that. And um, it's definitely difficult for, you know, uh, a player to kind of hear that they're not, you know, necessarily wanted back. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, maybe this isn't God's plans for you. Um, and that's how I looked at it. I looked at it. I kept, you know, being positive the entire time, regardless of, you know, the outcome, like definitely a shock to me. Cause I was kind of like, I didn't, you know, me, Duke is all I know. Duke is, you know, I've been at Duke for, you know, however long, but, you know, I kind of, I respect what she, her decision with, you know, making the choices that she did because like at, at, at the end of the day, it's her program now, you know, she's going to run her program how she wants to run her program. Um, no, not to her. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I feel like, you know, a lot of people are going to experience this, especially with it being a COVID year. Um, yeah. With that year, you know, that everybody gets back, it's going to be hard for a lot of people. And, you know, my advice to, you know, players that, you know, if this happens to them, that, you know, they just got to keep going. It's it's not God's plan. God's plan is for you is, you know, for you, not for anybody else. So, you know, if this happens to you, then, you know, just keep going, focus on, you know, the positive out of it all. I know it's going to be a tough process because it definitely was a tough process for me, um, especially with with everything I was going that was going on in my life at the time. But at the end of the day, um, like I said, you got to keep pushing forward and, you know, look at other options. For me, I feel like I was getting a lot too comfortable at Duke and I need a change, need a change in my life, need a change as far as to grow, to build, um, to make myself happy, to be, you know, be happy within myself, my inner peace. Um, so, so making a move to Charlotte was the best thing for me. God sent me so many signs about Charlotte, <laughs> literally, literally so many signs. Like I would ask for signs and he would just shoot them right at me um, mm. 10 minutes later. So um, I definitely think that, you know, people should just, you know, listen to, you know, God, their, their heart, follow their heart um, and, you know, just keep pushing forward. I know it's got to be difficult because, I mean, Duke is one of the longest relationships you've had in, in your life. You know, it's like legit half your life. Um, you know, you said sixth grade is when you first uh, got contact. And then, you know, two years later in eighth grade, um, you <clears throat> were committed. So all you had to do is pretty much just finish high school <laughs> and get yep. and just get there. Um, so I, I know it's got to be kind of difficult, but, you know, everything has some has new beginnings and you have that extra year of eligibility. So now you have two. Um, going into UNC Charlotte, what excites you about the the extra two years uh, that you get a chance to have? You're older, you're you've been through everything uh, when it comes down to just the grind of of the season, and now you get a chance to go to a team um, with some fresh eyes and as a veteran, and you have two years to make an impact. What excites you about that opportunity? I mean, I'm I'm super excited about it. Um, for one. The team is amazing. Um, just even watching from last year um, and what they've done, and you know, it's amazing just to see the pieces that are going to be back this year. Um, you got J Mac, um, who is actually you know a top tier point guard. Like her vision is amazing. Like I feel like she, as a player, she's going to be able to grow. She's going to be able to help me. I'm going to be able to help her as far as being in that point guard position. Um, and then you have Cam Roach coming in from Kentucky. Um, definitely a stellar player too, um, that she's going to be able to help me help everyone around us. It's going to be a lot of, you know, growth and, you know, building throughout the team that I feel like, you know, a lot of people, it's going to be a lot of moving pieces. That's going to be hard to stop. Um, in addition to that, we have Tay, Tay's coming back. Tay hit what 40 last year in, in a game, maybe two games. Um, Tay is a def, she's a, she's a killer. And I feel like she'll, she'll be able to help all of us, you know, the, the entire team, um, grow. It's just, honestly, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of moving pieces that, you know, a lot of people should be scared of because, um, mm. we're, we're actually, we're coming, we're coming this year. Um, and I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about a new environment. I'm super excited to, to work with the coaches. Um, I don't know. It's just, I'm just super excited. Like I, I haven't been this excited in a long time to, to start working in and getting the work done with, with these girls. Like it's, it's going to definitely be a showdown in Charlotte. Awesome. All right, there's a there's sometimes a rivalry, lack of a better term, between the triangle and Charlotte about which area is better. <laughs> so I gotta ask you, I gotta throw this out at you. Which one are you taking? Which one's better? Triangle or Charlotte? I got I gotta have to throw that one out there. Hey, I'm going Charlotte all the way. Oh, okay. Mm. 
Now, okay, I, now Chris would say Greensboro. You know, <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't say Greensboro. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love Greensboro. Greensboro is home. Uh, but I mean, there's clear differences between Charlotte <laughs> and Greensboro and Raleigh and Greensboro. Uh, but um, I don't know between Raleigh and Charlotte. I don't know if I could choose because there's there's different things that make them both. From a sports perspective, uh, I like the fact that Charlotte has more professional teams. But yeah. you know, also, yeah. like if you're in, you're here uh, in in the Raleigh area, it's almost like you have three professional teams with Duke and UNC and, and NC State with all the talent is there. So I don't know. It's it's kind of <laughs> how, a tie. <laughs> how, fun, how fun were the rivalries? Just, or having two major schools literally right down the road from you when you're at Duke and with NC State and UNC? How fun was having those just short bus trips to play those top schools? Yeah, it was definitely fun. Um, I would say everybody, you know, everybody's always keen to the Duke UNC rival, um, mm -hmm. which was definitely, you know, the highlight of, of my career at Duke. But to me, also, one of my, my favorite experiences was playing against NC State because my entire AAU team was on NC State. So you had, <laughs> you had KJ, you had, you know, people like Kayla Ely, you had um, Kiara Leslie, you had a lot of people that I played basketball with. And playing against them, it was just like the highlight of my day because it was like I went from, you know, playing on the same team as them as playing against them and just seeing their growth throughout college and stuff like that. Like, it was amazing. Like, I would have never thought that, you know, I knew I knew their abilities was amazing, but I would have never thought that they would be, you know, elite eight contestants, final four, like stuff like that. Like, I would have never thought that. And just to be able to be in the same conference and play against them, it was it was a joy to see. And I'm just super, I'm super proud of all of them, honestly. Um, just see how far we came and, and where we are now. It was just it's just amazing. All right. So uh, we've talked about sports. Um, let's get back to the music portion before we have you do a little bit of a freestyle. This is something I saw on uh, on uh, social media. People were saying, like, who is your Mount Rushmore of North Carolina mm. hip hop? And so the the picture that was there, it gave you J. Cole, it gave you the baby, gave you Petey Pablo and asked you to put in the fourth. Um, my fourth would have been Ninth Wonder. As a few people said, well, he, technically he's not a rapper, so I'll put Fonte in there. And so, you know, so that's you know different people's opinions. I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe the slate clean, and just gonna ask you four. You don't have to choose the ones that I've, that were already on there. Who would be your North Carolina Mount Rushmore of hip hop? All right, number one going J Cole, number two going Rhapsody, three I'm gonna put in Ninth because Ninth do be having bars too. Um, number four, I'm gonna go with, uh, number four, I'm gonna have to go with Ruben Vincent. He's, he's tough. Jamla records. Number okay. five, he's from Charlotte. Number five, I'm gonna have to go with, I'm gonna put myself over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. I That's like that. That's what's I up. Like that. But adding the extra in there. All, All right. right so, um, do you want us to give you like three, three words or like, you know, do you just want to do something off the top? How do you want this to go? No, I can just go ahead and I can just go ahead and spit something for you. Word. We'll just sit back. Let you do your thing. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right. Where I'm from, it's hard to make it out. Them trenches, mine spin a mile a minute. Probably why I'm so relentless. Been on my ground with hoops and music, dodging the fences. And look at what they got me. Notoriety, global attention. But that's not all. See, I made it out. When times got hard, my friends turned. That's when I knew the snakes were out. That's a blessing in disguise, and I'm all about connections. I stay connected. Circle strong as a collective if it blow. Dang, Houston, we have a problem, and I'm a lone star like I'm Texas C. I'm going to keep going regardless to the top. Do a big, a hungry flower that merely bloomed in the darkness. For a while, I was seeing gloom and only hardships. That's when I knew my time was coming. Hard times is when the star shines at its largest. I beg your pardon. A part of me knows a part of me have always been heartless, but there's still hope left for the flower to bloom in the garden. But can you find it? I oftentimes ask God, why me? Can he rewind it? And seeing his purpose with blurred vision, I was blinded. It took a while for me to see how God designed me. Hold up. I got something for this. Yeah, he does. I know what he wants. <laughs> Hold on. I got to give the, give the emoji. Yeah. <laughs> for <Yes. laughs> The sunglasses that was emoji for those who are listening and not watching this. <laughs> yeah, I, I have like a whole stack of emojis right here. <laughs> but no, nah, that was dope. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I can't wait for the album. You know, you said there's mm -hmm. no time time period put on it, but I can't wait for the album. When the album comes out, is it Michaela Boykin or what's, what's going to be the rap name? Yeah, rap name is MK. 
a lot of my friends call me MK, so I just went ahead and took that on and, you know, picked up MK. All right. If you could, you know, if you could have, if you had an unlimited budget, who all is producing on the album? Who all is going to be uh, featured on the album? Oh, yeah. Unlimited budget. I'm going to go ahead and get, you know, Ninth, of course, producing, DJ Khaled producing. Um, who's going to be on a feature? Uh, definitely need to get Lil Baby Cole. Lil Baby Cole. Lil Baby is killing it right now. Mm. Um, Lil Baby Cole, Rhapsody, of course. She got to be on if if unlimited unlimited um, budget. Um, and then after that, probably get Drizzy Drake. And then I need I need some of that, like, you know, R&B flow. So Tink. Tink on something, Kalani. Okay. I don't know, just throwing out a couple names that I wouldn't mind, you know, doing yeah. something with. But yeah, definitely. And my god brother, his name, uh, Josh on Register, they call him Ja. He definitely, he definitely one of the upcoming um rappers in North Carolina too. I can't wait for y'all to hear. He gonna definitely be on the uh EP too, but he's definitely dope too. He's definitely dope. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to to hear something. Um, I know you said you didn't have a time frame, but are you aiming for a certain amount of time, 12 months from now, six months from now? Oh, it'll definitely be within like the next couple months. Um, not a year from now, definitely the de uh, next couple months. But you know, there's no rush on it. I'm just chilling. I already have one song that I already made. Um, with Ninth had already um had me in the stew and you know helped me with a song. Yeah. So so it sounds like you know next few months. Then I guess whenever it comes out, let us know. We'll love to to have you back to to talk about it and um uh, you know talk about some of the songs. If you need any like radio skits or whatever, me and Dennis can help you out with that. You know, just 100%. whatever. Or, you know, uh, I can give you like four bars if you need to. You know, maybe four <laughs> and a half. <laughs> no, take that. That that'll be dope for real. That'll be dope. Yeah, absolutely. And and with our, you, we we gave you the no budget. Or I'm sorry, the unlimited budget. With our no budget culture state, we might have to get you and and ninth to do like a song for us. You know, for like <laughs> the intro for our for our podcast and everything. Ninth say, might cost. Ninth might cost us though. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> He might, he might. Like again, <laughs> our, our no budget that we have with Culture State. <laughs> well, Michaela, thank you so much. We're looking forward to uh, following your journey, and uh, I can't wait to see when you're like, you know, out here, you know, going platinum and represent North Carolina and, on the music scene. So uh, I'm excited about uh, that future right there myself. Now, I appreciate y'all so much for having me. Um, really enjoyed this, and you know, thank y'all. Anytime y'all want me on, y'all know I'm here. I got y'all. Um, definitely keep y'all updated about this um, EP and, you know, definitely keep y'all updated on my music. But thank you again. We want to thank MK, a.k.a. Yes. Michaela Boykin, for joining us today. Um, uh, this show has been about people who have done great things in North Carolina. But I feel yeah. like this is a situation um, just kind of like, you know, with uh, Amber Nichols, with mm -hmm. Jennifer King, that we're talking to people at the beginning of their ascend to the top yeah. before a lot of people really knows their name. Uh, and that, and that's Michaela Boykin. And, um, I, and I just have the feeling that at some point she's going to blow up, whether it's basketball or, or whether it's uh, rap or maybe both at the same both. time. Could you imagine you watch her play in a game, then she does the halftime show too. That'd, that'd be pretty sweet. That would be <laughs> dope. That would be absolutely awesome. If I want to see that. If she ends up being uh, like the female Damian Lillard of the yeah. WNBA, that's actually know, where a really she's good like comparison. rapping yeah. to her own stuff in commercials or whatever, and she's yeah. like, you know, rapping uh, da, da, Gatorade. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That'll be dope. That would actually be pretty awesome. Yeah, I think I mean, Damian Lillard. That's actually a really good comparison. I, I didn't even think about that, but that could be a situation where, you know, she's playing pro and. You know, she just drops a mixtape or just drops a couple singles every once in a while. And it's like, oh, what? Yeah. I mean, then you watch her play and she also drops 30. You know, she gets that would be hard by Elizabeth Cambage and then she drops a diss track. Boom. Exactly. That, that'd be, <laughs> I want that so badly right now. Uh, and I, I honestly, I do hope the best. I mean, she's got a great mentor, Ninth Wonder. I mean, mm. th that's just, you can't really get much better than that, especially if you're from North Carolina, just the way he's plugged in with with rock nation and just so many other people. I, I think she's off to a great start. And again, this is, this is just the, the budding of a superstar that we're seeing right here, not only on the floor, but also in the studio. I want to circle back because I said Elizabeth Cambage because um, she's 
my favorite WNBA player, mm-hmm. but I forgot that she's also a DJ. So oh. how awesome would it be if at the WNBA All Star Game, yeah, you it's have the, just what exactly what you were just saying, where mm-hmm. Michaela is is the halftime you know uh, performance, but the, her DJ is Elizabeth Cam Beige, and that will be amazing. That be WNBA. Hire us. We got you heard us right here. You heard it (laughs) first right here. There's video proof of it. There's a (laughs) timestamp and everything. (laughs) Yeah. Like, come on, pay us. We we have we have no budget, so we would actually have a budget so we can hire MK and Ninth Wonder to do a Culture State song for us. Absolutely. And and then, you know, featuring uh, Rhapsody. Yes. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. That's what settles it. It's easy money right there. That settles it. <laughs> you know, I, I think at some point too, we need to get our rhymes together. So when yes. we have other people who are rapping, we can, you know, impress them with our, you know, chick it, chick it one, two. You know what I'm saying? We can go in and out with everything. Be well, you, you've already started to do a little music stuff on your side because you got a, you know, soundboard and everything. So you put the beat together. I could, I could write some words. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we'll work on that. Y'all stay tuned to yeah. see if there's going to be a Culture State mixtape coming out. Yes. So uh, <laughs> we want to thank <laughs> MK, a.k.a. Michaela Boy- Boykin from uh, Clinton, North Carolina, uh, joining us. Duke grad going to kill at UNC Charlotte. She's going to do an amazing job there. And then also um, looking forward to whenever uh, her EP or album or whatever is going to be comes out, even if it's just a single, I'll be putting it on a playlist for sure absolutely 100 percent. especially if you have streaming like itunes you can you can <laughs> listen to it because chris iTunes. chris a long time ago gave me crap because i didn't have apple music but whatever that's a different <laughs> conversation for a different day <laughs> again yeah thanks to mk again you can download culture state from wherever you get your podcast uh, apple spotify tune in all the big stuff and again you can watch us on youtube 99.9 The Fan. Just look it up. Culture State. We're there. Don't watch me. Watch TV. Oh, that's the same thing, baby. <laughs> Give us five stars, please. Thick five stars. You didn't like that, Dennis? You just caught me off guard with that. I was like, well, he's not <laughs> wrong. You're just like, <laughs> huh? What? Huh? What? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening. Thick five stars if you can. Uh, when you give us the ratings, let friends know. Share it with five friends. Um, also, you know, hit us up on Twitter at Chris Lee TV, at the Fan Rookie. Follow us at Culture State Pod and on Instagram and if, too. If you see us out in public, mm-hmm. we still have a pandemic, so don't give us a hug. But hey, we'll give you a fist pound. Yeah, and we when will. we can hug again, free hugs. My hugs are free ninety nine, and they're worth it. Mm. <laughs> we out. <laughs> The Culture State Podcast, part of the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network, with new shows coming out every Wednesday. Download and subscribe from wherever you get your podcasts, including the WREL Sports Fan app.